Welcome to the stand-up meeting for FPGA for Tuesday, May 10th, 2022. We are going to talk about what we did over the past week, what we did, we have planned to do over the next week. Uh, if there's any resources that we need or any roadblocks that we have. And go ahead, Paul, why don't you start us off? Okay, from here in the remote lab west, I think I have nothing to report. Well, and good news in the in a sense <laughs> so no problems no problems to report not that i know of cool some of the gear did go on walkabout it was involved in a demo that's true yes we uh, we took the second analyzer out and uh, showed off some uh, m17 waveforms yeah that was fun and, and worked pretty well or any resources or or roadblocks? None identified. Excellent. Very cool. Hello, Anshul. Hey, why don't you uh, take the next turn? Tell us sure. uh, what you've been up to and uh, what you got planned and any resources needed or roadblocks. Sure. Uh, so um, integration testing, DBBS to integration testing is in progress. So that's, that's being done. Uh, but majority of the time in studying about GPU uh, stuff, CUDA, how it, how it can run and designing stuff to uh, implement the UV transmitter on G. So yeah, that's me. Oh yeah, very good. And um, how, how are things coming along um, for Hamvention, for the code project for Hamvention? Yeah. Uh, I would say uh, everything is in there, uh, the integration part, uh, just need to test it. Um, I face some timing issues, which I have resolved. Mm, it's in, uh, I, mean, uh, I might need some help there just to get, uh, earlier I was trying to do it with MQTT. Uh, but it was it was taking uh, much more time because it's it's new for me. So what I'm aiming is doing a simple loopback kind of testing. Uh, Suota gave me some ideas. Uh, so working on that, it's it's almost there. The design is there. Integration is complete. Synthesizing everything is uh, working fine. It's just that I, I need to it it needs to work end to end. Um, uh, last week I couldn't spend much time on it because i was working on that gpu stuff but yeah uh, i mean i can take that on priority if that's what the need is yeah it sounds like there's a i mean because hamvention would be the the goal um i'm pretty sure that the work would be appreciated and used even if it came in after hamvention but it's uh it would be great to finish it um so it's a it's not a hard deadline. In other words, if it's not done by Hamvention, it doesn't mean that the work is worthless or anything like that. Um, so if it if it can be done, great. If not, then um, yeah, that would be good to help that particular project and product. Yeah, and 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 okay, what exactly uh, will be good enough? I mean, I, I can show uh, some graphs. I can show how the integration has been done. I can walk, if needed, I can walk to the code or something. So what level of details will be needed? If it's not complete end-to-end, -end, what would be a good one? Yeah, I think any any level of documentation or anything that could be shown would be, would be helpful. I think that might be, okay. up to art. it might be up to Art to, to tell you what, what he needs uh, for the event. Um, <laughs> But for sure, okay. uh, do, any sort of uh, graph or or, yeah. or or any sort of visualization, I'm sure he'd be thrilled with, because uh, usually people mm -hmm. don't provide those sorts of things. So mm -hmm. yeah, so working code is always, of course, uh, yeah. great. Um, you know, but but I've been following along, and it, it seems like there's been some, you know, there's there's equipment needed, and and testing uh, can reveal mm -hmm. uh, problems. So. Uh, yeah, it's a greatly appreciated, and I think it will make a, a big impression. It's a large event with uh, you know, lots and lots of people that can see uh -huh. that we've been assisting. So it's always a good thing. 
Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, we can do the GPU thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds focus, sounds focus yeah. sounds good. Any um, is there any resources that you need or any any other roadblocks that you have? No, no, no. Uh, nothing. Uh, I'm good. And on the other thing, uh, you must have read the comments from Charles uh, that uh, there is some performance related issues. I mean, uh, what we expect from GPU, it might not be. Uh, it will be slower than FPJ, but still you see value add in implementing it. Oh, yeah. It answers around G GPU. Yeah, it's, um, it's yes. Uh, Yes, I do see value in it. Um, it mm -hmm. is different, and and mm -hmm. there are, I mean, because we we've, we've been, uh, on Slack, we've been discussing the the very interesting um, constraints, meaning that mm -hmm. you have to have the same mod cod for the entire yes, breadth, yes. right? So yeah. so it's extremely good for constant coding and modulation. It's also very mm -hmm. very good for variable coding and modulation. It just really doesn't. It doesn't make a. It is not a great fit for adaptive coding and modulation unless you have a very high bandwidth, unless you mm -hmm. can always fill it up, fill up the yep. entire set of frames every time. And with adaptive encoding and modulation, you really don't have that guarantee. So you have to use it in the right way. Uh, but mm -hmm. it makes a, a very, very good fixed uh, or constant coding or variable coding and modulation thing. Okay. And you know, as we see uh, GPUs develop over time. Uh, some of the uh -huh. performance issues go away. Uh, uh -huh. There's just so much interest in in GPU technology that having a working example of this type of forward error correction and this type of uh, communications protocol is of great mm -hmm. interest. So uh, yeah, that's, there's value in it, you know, and, and being it just being able to explain the the, the constraints and to to show uh, the systems level impact of of the architecture that you use. With all of the interest in um, heterogeneous computing, uh, yeah. that in a, in and of itself is a is a high level academic paper uh, on like if you had a, a system, if you're say you're you're developing a, a on the fly uh, some sort yeah. of co cognitive com, uh, computing or cognitive radio uh, thing, that if you if you understand the limitations and you can can put those limitations into parameters if you can parameterize this in any way and then hand that over that decision making over to a uh, cognitive radio uh, system or control then you have a tremendous amount of power to decide how to assign advanced digital uh, signal processing or, or com digital communications now this yeah. is all very high-end stuff so it's, yes. it's different yeah. than than like we're trying to implement something uh, in particular mm -hmm. But we're all, we all should be trying to advance the state of the art in, in you know, for amateur radio purposes, for, uh, for general open source purposes. And there's an awful lot of interest in, in this sort of heterogeneous cognitive computing uh, from DARPA and from um, uh, NSF and, and all of that. So, you know, anything that can, can contribute towards that, I think will, uh, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll find that there's a, a audience uh, for it, uh, and results with actual code are uh -huh. far superior to words on a page. So, yeah, I don't know that's. I know that you don't need any additional challenges in your life, or you know, you're not lacking for projects. But the this is a pretty hot area in the heterogeneous and high performance computing is how to assign yes. problems, how to assign work to a GPU. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. So we we have general purpose processors that are almost always the best and then we have FPGA and ASIC which are are particularly good at massively parallel things mm -hmm. and then we have GPUs that are good in a, a in a different way for parallel so <laughs> once you have those three tools and you're you're working really hard to leverage this um, and decide to load balance um, <laughs> so it's it's pretty advanced work and and would yeah. be would get some some attention and some recognition that's so good that's, to know that's my yeah. opinion on the work yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Thanks, Michelle. That's good to know. And apart from this, yes, I'm also uh, collaborating with Art uh, for uh, another office uh, to develop software for his office. Very good. Sounds awesome. Yeah, just let me know if you need anything. Sure. Cool. Okay, James, tell us how it's going on your end. Uh Pretty similar condition to Paul in Remote Lab West as to here in Remote Lab South. 
Um, not too much report. We had a couple, we had a bigger thunderstorm last week, but none of it seemed to be in a condition where it would damage any of the equipment. So we can continue running during all of that. Uh, we're continuing our work on getting a more proper permanent facility up. And that's going to be mostly right now we're looking between our various options, uh, determining the budget. And we're going to have uh, some of those numbers available at the next board meeting so that way we have a bunch of options. We can say, hey, which is the best one for our needs? We're going to come in with that. But otherwise, not too much report. And we're doing fairly well. We're pretty good on resources. So, yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, looking forward to that. I think we'll we'll talk more this week and um, and get a meeting together to, to look at uh, moving forward. And um, I think there's a very high degree of, of uh, success that we can have with this particular lab and a lot of opportunities to really raise open source, uh, raise the profile of open source work um, with the local universities and, and some of the businesses. So it should be, should be a big impact. I've already gotten, I've started to try to reach out and recruit people in the area that I think would be interested and supportive and uh, so far the feedback is very positive so looking forward to to making this happen yeah it's going to be awesome all right any other comments or questions before we close for the week all right so on this end um Let's see, we'd had a number of presentations uh, over the past week and some travel. So those went well, but mainly focused on M17. Um, over the next week, what I'm hoping to do is to better learn how to demonstrate the work that we've done so far on the encoder for DVBS2 and S2X and to both on the ADRV 9371 and the Pluto and to start uh, writing down what you need to do, uh, starting from the repo in order to get it to work over the air. Uh, there's a lot of steps and some of them I think might be able to be streamlined or packaged in a way that makes it easier to demo and therefore use. So that's kind of, that's my uh, highest priority. Uh, our goals are to demonstrate over the air things working in August at DEF CON. We also have an excellent opportunity at HAM Expo, which will probably be in September. I don't have the dates yet, but it's looking like it will be the uh, month following DEF CON. So HAM Expo has been good for us. And we've been invited to demonstrate and present all of our work at the November 2022 SBMS meeting, um, San Bernardino Microwave Society, and they are helping us with components engineering for 10 gigahertz transmitters, which show off our work and a 47 gigahertz transceiver system using um, our design. So that components engineering is moving forward. And they also have made available um, the opportunity to place beacons, multimedia beacons um, in Los Angeles at uh, sites that they are associated with. And this is a huge opportunity. We also have some opportunities, some offers from, from Texas, Florida, hopefully from Arkansas as well, uh, and San Diego. So um, what we're, we're moving towards is taking the intellectual property, being able to package it up, being able to make it durable and put it on the air as soon as possible. So this, I'm hoping that this summer we can do all of those things along with the, the demonstrations to, to various communities. So that's, that's what we're doing. Um, I don't have any travel planned for the summer except to travel to DEF CON. The uh, SBMS meeting is in Los Angeles, so it's close and the HAM Expo is virtual. So the trying to clear the schedule as much as possible so that I'm available for everybody that needs any sort of help and to also accomplish as much as possible for over the air demos. All right, so see you on Slack. And uh, thank you very much for your time. It's deeply appreciated. Uh, time, once you spend it, you can't get it back. So it has no price. Thank you very much and see you online. Thank you.